We're live, Bruno. You don't care. You only care about donut. Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome. Sorry, I'm distracted with puppy right here. Oh, dog. He wants the donut, so I'm going to let him get it. Anyways, welcome to the live stream. I'm here. And Ionalith, welcome. Um, made it just in time. Happy Tuesday. Okay, I'm here. Welcome. All right, I'm in a little bit different corner of the room today. Um, on a different desk, but it's okay. I can still write on this one. Today, we are going to be ripping part this vest. This one should be easier on camera because... <clears throat> Let me put my microphone on this side so it's easier for you guys to hear me. But it should be a lot easier to see this time because it's not bright white and um, blowing out the camera. So, yay! Hi, Toby. You coming? Come here, Toby. Okay, come say hi. Come say hi. <clears throat> All right, well, you just get to... Toby's nose. Oh, there's Toby. Say hi, Toby. You're a good boy. Okay. All right. So I took a peek about, I took a peek at this vest before I got started and I kind of wish I didn't, but I had this question that was gnawing at the back of my head. How did they flip it inside out? Knowing that this is a fully lined vest, where did they flip it inside out? <clears throat> A lot of um, home sewing vest patterns, you do it at the shoulder seam and you might have to um, hand stitch it to hide it. Some people do a top stitching. So I first place I looked was the shoulders, but those seem to be flipped inside out perfectly, no top stitching. And then I was looking at the hem. And a lot of times with um, the hems of suits, the lining is cut a little bit longer, but they don't want it to hang longer. So it'll be folded up underneath itself. And so I was peeking to see if they did that. And I noticed something. See that? Look at that. So this is the hem of the vest. And right here, there's a giant hole. Where you can turn it inside out. But um, at that seam, you can kind of see, see this right here? Fusible web tape. And it's just a little strip right there. So instead of trying to hand stitch this or top stitch it in any way, they just put a little glue and pressed it there. So if professionals do it, it's not cheating when you do it. <clears throat> um, who's here? 45th Clown. Hello. Hope you're enjoying making this series as much as I'm enjoying watching it. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, Yonalith. I love vests. Now that's a question I have for you. When was the last time you have worn a vest? I know I, I know I've owned a lot of vests, but I don't often wear them. I wear them for certain purposes. At the costume shop, we had a rack full of vests and they were used for all sorts of costumes. Um, and I have a couple vests here in my collection because I don't have as many as I thought, but one of my favorite vests, look at it, it's even like dirty from construction. <laughs> but I have a high visibility vest. This is um, part of my kit, part of my kit part of my um, set kit because people take you very seriously when you're in um, a construction vest, when you're saying, you know, everybody go that way, they listen to you, which is really awesome. And also it has a lot of pockets. Um, a lot of people on set will wear um, those fly fishing vests or those tactical vests where they have tons of pockets on them to add <clears throat> so that they can keep their gear and their wipes and the things that they need on hand and make it easy and they don't have to carry it around. 
you know, to add extra pockets. Um, I also have this vest over here. Can we get into this thing? The cutest. This is a little leather um, chaps and vest set. Um, it is not lined at all. This is the simplest version of a vest. <sighs> Aren't these the cutest little chaps? But um, this is the most basic of a vest that you can get. Yes, it's a little fancy because they added trim. There's little pockets and little decorative details. But it is a sleeveless shirt that's kind of open in the front. There's, it can be, you can add a closure, you can add buttons, you can add, not traditionally zippers in the front of vests. It's mostly buttons, let's be honest. I've seen snaps, I've seen um, them just sewn in the front. <clears throat> I've seen them left open. Um, you don't always even need the full back piece for a vest. I've seen vests where they're halter style, where they wrap around your neck and then you just kind of adjust them in the back with a string. Those ones fit like all the sizes. There are so many different styles of vests that you can go. Um, then there's even cummerbunds, which is just the waist part of the vest. And, um, those have crumb catchers in them. Crumb catchers, the little, um, pleats. Call them crumb catchers because when you know you're wearing your cummerbund right, the um, pleats are facing up and they should catch your crumbs. As If you eat and you drop your crumbs, the um, pleats should be facing up to catch them. And then that's the correct way to wear a cummerbund. I don't know who makes these rules up, but I think they're funny. Um, <clears throat> and that just kind of finishes off the top edge of your pants even though you have a belt in there, but. <sighs> Question is, is what is the real purpose of a vest? It's a sleeveless jacket. It's not a shirt. It's not a jacket, but boy, it does it add, add a lot of style. It adds color. If you lose the jacket, it keeps your ensemble together. It keeps you looking fresh and fly. But let's see what makes this vest. But again, look at this giant hole that they just smooshed closed. I love it. <clears throat> Marble Guy's here. Hi, Marble Guy. Wolverine Scratch, something Tony Montana's date would never wear. <laughs> Yana, let's be right back. Okay. Uh, Wolverine Scratch, giant hole to hide the yo-yo. Yeah, I could totally hide snacks in here. Um... Big Bob's Pross. The last time I wore a waistcoat was at my brother's wedding 15 years ago. Yep, formal wear. That might be a good last time you wore a vest. I don't know the last time I wore a vest. I really don't. I feel like I've owned them. I've owned a lot of them. This is the first time I've worn this vest and I've had it for a while because like usually I just wear my shirt or jacket or I don't know. I feel like you have to be intentional. Like you are choosing to wear a vest. But yeah. Anyways, I still haven't ripped into this and started this scene. And I am going to rip. Yeah, I think I'm just going to rip out this bottom seam. Let me get it started and then I'll just tear into it. <clears throat> Okay, so it looks like, ooh, 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 how did they put this together? This is, I love what, figuring these things out because there's no, um, there's a million ways to do anything. But I got this one scene out and then I'm gonna flip it. These best sections right here are not connected to the center section. There is a seam. So the lining isn't sewn separately and then together it is done by piece. Okay. I love this. Look at all these construction details that they leave in without um, this because they don't have to serge these seams because they are all enclosed and that is how those seams are finished. Right here, we have these little slices cut into the, um, is that the armhole? Yeah, that's the armhole. Armhole to fit the curve. 
if you don't do these slices, your garment's not going to lay right. So if you're making things at home and you're just like, why does it lay right? It's probably because you're missing something so simple as these little slices. What do these slices do? They make it so that when you turn it inside out, there is the seam allowance can stretch out and fit this curve. Because if you were trying to put two pieces of paper together, they're not going to um, flip easily. You're going to have to add those little slices so that it can fit around the curve. Sort of like if you're putting a piece of paper around a, um, a circle on the bottom, you slice it and then you glue it. You have to do the slices. You can't do it in one piece. Otherwise, it gets too much. It's the same thing with fabric. You don't think of it because it's a lot more drapey than paper. But interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to mark my, how many seams I have. So seams and then pieces and we'll keep a count. And I have one seam I've ripped out so far, just the bottom one. The next seam I think I'm going to rip out. Let me see. I think I'm going to do the side seams. Yeah. I love it. You can really see all the ugly and I love it because it is really ugly on the inside, but it's finished with the lining. So you don't always see this right here. We have the darts. We have two darts, a center back seam. Looks like it's a pretty straight center back seam, but sometimes these seams can be curved for a better fit. And right here, you can see that in those darts is where they added the um, buckle. I like these because they make it fit better. They adjust to the fit. So I'm gonna take out these side seams now where they attach the back to the front pieces. Yeah, cause it looks like they started at, oh, this is all one seam. Where would they have started? It looks like they started at this side, went all the way around to this side. So I'm going to, if that is one continuous seam, I'm going to, yep, I'm going to count that as one seam. And then we'll just rip it up. And it's not even backstitched, which makes it super easy to pull out. I actually don't think I even really need this. I don't want to rip the delicate fabrics though, so... Interesting. 45th Clown says, hope everyone's doing well. In UK, we usually call the formal ones waistcoats. We generally say hi versus, hi this vest though. I used to wear the three-piece suits to work before being casual. So pre-2020. Nice. So it's been a minute since you've worn a vest, but you actually were invested. <laughs> no, honestly, since I've been thinking about this project, um, that one song from The Simpsons with the Mr. Burns, the see my vest, see my vest made of real gorilla chest. I've been singing that in my head all day. Yeah. <sighs> and then... Almost through. All right. So I have a piece off right here. It's not a full piece off. And then I have a front panel. And another panel. 
And then this is our back lining piece. I like how they finished the lining. That was super easy. Instead of trying to keep this lining as part of this lining and sewing them separate and they just did it at the seam, which is brilliant. You know, next time I make a vest, I might just make it that way. Hmm. Okay, let me rip off the tag because we are counting the tag as a piece because as a manufacturer, you have to include it. There's no not including it and it needs to be seamed on. So I'm counting it. Ah, they did a good job. They backstitched this one. So we have a tag is a piece. I'm counting it. <laughs> and I'm counting that as this, this scene Just to rip it off. Okay, let me do this center back seam down the lining. So you can see where it was cut and where it was pressed and where it was stitched right here where it's a little funk so see how it's a little off on the fold on this side where it's off because this is nice and straight and then it gets off on this side this is where the um non-sewn part where the hole was all right let me rip out the center back seam they did backstitch this. That's because this fabric is really um, delicate and it shreds really easily. So backstitching at the top of this is important. This fabric's too delicate, so I can't just rip it as easy as I want to. But that wasn't too bad. All right. So we have two lining pieces and on all the curves, you can see that they clipped the seams and they pressed everything. So one, two pieces and one more seam. Okay. Wolverine scratch. I wore a three-piece suit to my son's graduation. I looked good in it. I really do like a three-piece suit. I feel like the vest makes it look clean because you have the buttons going on. You have your shirt tucked in and your shirt being tucked into your pants in general gives you a little blousey poof because you have to be able to move around. And so it'll naturally give you a little bit of a poof. My vest is doing that right above the ribbing. But um when you have a straight vest, it just makes it a nice clean line and it hides all the fluffiness and it makes a very clean presentation, I guess you could say. Okay, I'm putting those to the side and we are going to move on to this back piece and I'm going to rip out these um, darts here and this center back seam. And we have some fuzz on here. Uh, Marvel guy, Felicia, are we allowed to share 3D files on here? Because I made two of them on Colts 3D. If you want to take a look at them, uh, you are more than welcome to, but I'm not a 3D printer person very much. Like, <laughs> I have friends who do that, like Odin. But, but yes, you're welcome to, but I'm not an expert on 3D printing files. Okay. Wolverine scratch. Felicia looks cool in a vest. Thank you. Vests, you, you really have to be intentional about wearing them. I'm just saying. They are a fashionable piece of clothing or waistcoats. I like that name. But I feel like it should have sleeves if it's a coat. There we go. Center back seems off. But it's still tied together because these are in 
the darts. Okay, darts always seem really scary when people are learning to sew because they are these weird triangle pieces that if you don't get right, nothing fits right. But if you get them right, all of a sudden everything fits so much better. And understanding that can be kind of tricky. The great thing with menswear is that the darts don't have to be that crazy. They're just little pinches. But the whole point of them is to contour to your body shape. So shoulders to waistlines typically taper. They don't always. Everybody's shaped completely different. But you can always get those style lines in there. And it will give you that effect. But there we go. Honestly, I don't think this is really taken in too much. Let me see how deep of a dart this is. So it looks like they just, yeah, this is just a, a one inch dart. So one, two, three, four, negative four inches. Okay. Because you can always add the fullness back on this side or this side to take it in on this side. So it's not necessarily um, making it super teeny tiny at the waist. So this is one piece. This is another piece that I just took off. This is just a little strip that they sewed. <sighs> More seams, huh? This is a seam, yep. I'm just gonna flip it inside out. I don't think I'm gonna actually like, uh, it's actually not that hard, I'll rip it. I'll rip it. We're ripping this to shreds. It's a suit dissection after all. These little seams. Okay. So this was just straight stitched and straight stitched. So that's two more seams I just ripped out. Plus the dart. Let me just rip this one out so I can technically say I ripped it out because I just marked it that I did. But just a teeny tiny rectangle for the strip. This piece is out. Put that over there. And this piece is exactly the same as that other piece and so is this. But they stitched one more seam right here to hold this little metal piece on. And I'm going to rip that off. I love how they did not do it straight. They very easily could have just lined it up like this to sew it, but they didn't. They did it at this angle. You know, I actually think it looks nice, so. <clears throat> A little metal bit, ripping this part up, but this is another two pieces. So I'm gonna count those two pieces. And one, two, three more seams. One, two, three more seams. You can go over there. All right, let's talk about the front vests. <clears throat> what I really like is even though this is a tiny little dude suit, the pockets are real. These pockets are real. They're fully lined and everything. I love those little details. Even the little one. I'm gonna rip be ripping these part separately because they are um, both a little bit different. This side has the um, buttonholes, this side has the buttons, and this is a double pocket and this is a single pocket. So I'm just gonna rip them apart separately even though the lining pieces, since they're symmetrical, <clears throat> I only ripped over a half. But these halves are not the same, so they will be ripped apart separately. I am... Just gonna cut out the buttonholes because those are a pain in the butt to rip out. It is possible. Is it worth it now? No, it'll probably take me about 20 minutes. And that's just not something I wanna do. Okay. 
those are ripped out. This is not sewn at the top, it's just a tube. And it is sewn together like Here it is inside out. Oh, there's a little bit of stitching left from that buttonhole. Let me see if I can rip it. There we go. Okay. Here we go. This is the inside out before it gets flipped and they flip it from probably this side because it's easier than the arm, the top of the shoulder. Okay, so the lining is just the lining fabric, but the gray fabric has interlining or interfacing. It is a non-woven, Iron-on interfacing. They didn't go fully into the side seam. They kind of cut it off there and it is definitely curved. I find that an interesting decision. Probably makes the manufacturing process significantly easier because this is where they attach it to the other piece is right at the seam, about an inch in, right about here. So this is probably very intentional. All right, let's rip out some more seams. I think this perimeter seam right here, from here all the way down and around to here is one seam. And then this is a second seam. So I'm gonna rip this big seam out and then I'll rip out the little seam. They did backstitch at the top of this, so they started here at least and ended here. I typically like to start at the top and work my way to the bottom because usually the hemline is, if you're gonna like, if your fabric's gonna get off, it's easier to hide it here than it is to hide it here. So I'm assuming they started here and went to here. Um, not top. Are the buttonholes lined or is that just the back, just black thread? Um, those are holes. You're not seeing anything through here. I just completely cut off the buttonholes. They were threaded. So they're through this. There is a layer of the outside fabric, the gray fabric. And then this fusible interfacing, gray fabric, fusible interfacing, when it's flipped in outside, right side out and pressed, then they add the buttonholes on top and they stitched them in using a buttonhole stitch, which is kind of a fancy um, zigzag. And then they cut it out. I just cut off all the stitching so that it was easy to flip inside out instead of ripping out this, the buttonholes, but they are, Technically fully lined because the vest is fully lined, but they did not put any um, lining specifically for the buttonholes to reinforce the buttonholes. Forty fifth clown. Does the pocket placement relate to the buttonholes? Looks like it lines up at the top. That is a very good question. My answer is probably no. To tell you the honest truth, I think it has more to do with where it hits on the body and the buttons are just supposed to be evenly placed. So if we look at this, this buttonhole, the bottom kind of lines up to it, but I think what it is, is it's just above the armhole dart. So it's at the top of the pocket. And then this looks like it's at the waist, the actual waistline, because this looks like about the waistline. And then this looks like it's right below the waistline. And the last button, it looks like it's right at the waistline. This is tiny, so it's not like my size, but um, but I think the but the waist pockets are at the waist with a little bit of the vest going past the waistline, 
and then this one is like an upper pocket that goes right about here but no they're not necessarily correlated with the button placement the button goes top bottom and then you find the center and that's where the middle button goes they just need to be evenly spaced but very good question All right, let's turn this back inside out because we got to rip it apart. I still haven't ripped out that giant seam that I keep saying that I was going to rip out. But you guys are asking big questions and this is fine. All right, let's rip it out. Starting at the top, working my way to the bottom. Bottom. Get past this back stitching. Interesting thing is that they used gray and white thread looks like they had the gray thread in the bobbin and the white thread on the sewing machine and they just eh, they both kind of work okay all right ripped out that seam and now it's just attached at this weird little armhole. See how nicely that turns? Pressing. You really have to press. And so look at this. See how it's thick here and it gets really thin right here? This is your seam allowance. So they trimmed away the gray tighter than they trimmed away the red. The red is a lighter weight fabric, so it's not as bulky as the gray. The gray is the most structurally sound fabric in this vest. <laughs> and so that one has been trimmed back the most. And it's an inch, half an inch, and then down here at the armhole, it goes down to a quarter of an inch. It's way easier to flip a quarter of an inch seam allowance than it is to flip an inch because it will not do this nice easy curve unless it's narrow right here where the curve is so interesting right you can see that this has to get trimmed away right at the spot right where that curve is in order to make that curve as sharp as they did so i'm in pressed <laughs> Finished edges and ironing as you sew makes very professional looking garments. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. I have to be careful about ripping it at this quarter inch because this fabric the lining fabric is very shreddy. And what do I mean by shreddy? It means it frays a lot on the edges. Okay. So now we have two separate pieces, but I'm not gonna count the pieces yet, but I have to count that seam that I just ripped out. about this seam now. So the lining doesn't go all the way to the inner edge. They kind of bring it in a little bit and then they start the lining. This is called the facing and this is called the lining. Um, facings are a really clean way to finish an edge. Linings are also, but if the vest flips open a little bit, you're seeing the pretty gray versus the bright contrasty red. So it gives it a clean edge finish. I often ignore facings because I like to just do straight up linings. But when they're done well, I definitely appreciate a good facing. All right, let's rip out this seam. Yep, they backstitched at the top and bottom of the seam.
When I know I'm going to cross the seam, I don't always backstitch. But if I want to make sure that the thing doesn't come undone, I definitely backstitch. And this, these stitches are on the looser side. They're a little bit bigger stitches. They're not super tight. They're about as loose as the loose stitches in the tie. And a little bit, yeah, they're a little bit looser than the shirt stitches. But this is a heavier fabric. This is a heavier fabric, so they can get away with it. Okay. A little bit. There you go. All right. This is two pieces because it has the um, fusible interfacing. And then it also has the gray. But I cannot separate these pieces because they have been fused. There is no pulling them apart. They are now one, but I'm counting two pieces here. So pieces, one, two. And that can go into my pile of pieces. Okay. Big Bob's props. I think I need to get an iron then. Yes. Um, Odin has my portable iron. I have a wireless iron that you set on the dock and then you can take it off and use it. That is my favorite one to sew with because I will put my um, ironing pad. I just have a magnetic like ironing pad that I got from Joann's. It's supposed to go on like the top of your dryer, but I just put it underneath my sewing machine, put my sewing machine on top of it. I sew. And then if I need to press the seam, I just smoosh it forward and then I press it and then I keep sewing. <laughs> It's a setup that works for me. I also have a tiny travel iron. I like working with the little irons while I'm sewing because I don't like getting back up and down again. But um, ultimately, I would love a like one of those um, industrial steamers, like the irons where you the drip iron. I want one of those. Those things are the best. All right. This is the lining piece I ripped off. So I need to count this as a piece. So two pieces for the facing, one piece for the lining, and now the front piece. Let's rip off these pockets now. Oh, let's focus first, okay? These are both right off these pockets now. Oh, let's focus first, okay? These are both right in this dart, but if you look, look at, look at, it's just a decorative detail. Remember how I told you it doesn't have to be like a lot of fabric, it's more the line? This is just a little teeny tiny tuck. It's not cut. The fabric itself doo -doo -doo, is just a little stitch from this top to the bottom to give that look of a dart. Where the back piece, yeah, here's the back piece. It was a whole inch pinched in to make this dart. But from the outside, it just looks like a dart. But this one, they just did a style line and didn't actually take it in. But I also think it makes it easier to line up this pocket. I don't know. How, like, I kind of know how they would. They'd have to really piece it together. But this looks significantly easier than trying to pattern out what that dart ought to be. Okay. So top pocket and then the bottom pocket because the top pocket's not involved in that dart and it's simpler. Um, oh, look it. They didn't catch the edge of the pocket in, in here. There's a hole. I didn't make this hole. Oh, well, yeah, that's not really, that's just a teeny tiny stitch there. Okay, okay, okay. Let's rip out this top stitching, top stitching. Top stitching is the stitching that you can see. So it's gonna be this stitching right here. Can you see the top stitching? Cause it's on the outside. There's no top stitching on this row, but there's top stitching here. 
and there's top stitching here. It's harder to see on the side, but you can see it really well right here. So I'm gonna rip it out here and I'm gonna rip it out here. And then we're probably gonna rip the inside part of that. So get this top stitching out. Iana looked at behind the scenes fashion. Will you be working on the pants next? Yeah, I think I'll do pants next and do the jacket last because the jacket's going to be intenseness. All right, here's the top stitching on this side. It looks like there's more going on in here, so it's about to get exciting. Get this top stitching down off. Okay. You know, with I was at Home Depot with my dad and saw a freak ton of Rayobi items and thought of you and Odin, LOL. I know. I I I want a lot of things there. They have a um hot glue pen I want to try and a cordless rotary tool that looks really interesting. Okay. So what is this? Okay, okay, okay. So this little flap, it's tapered in right here at the corners and tucked in. So I just ripped off these top stitching and it's tucked in and it's sewn right here. So I'm gonna rip out this little seam right here and there's some more stitching on this part. I'm gonna rip out this one first and then I'll rip off that one. But before I do, let me write those two little seams that I just ripped out one too before I forget about them. Okay. That's not the same. It's this one. Hmm. This is a black thread and that is a gray thread. So these were sewn with different sewing machines. Somebody installed the pockets separately. Yeah. Okay. So I ripped out a seam. Couldn't quite see it. I have to mark it before I forget I did it. So now it's no longer attached to this piece, but it's attached to the vest. So I'm going to rip out the seam that's attaching the pocket little tube to the vest. This honestly looks like a big pain in the butt and I don't want to do it, but if this was all I was doing was just sitting and putting in pockets, I suppose it wouldn't be that bad. Okay, another seam counted. Okay, and now I have the little pocket. I'm just gonna, this fabric's even more shreddy than the other piece. I just popped these two seams here, so. A little lightweight piece of polyester that's been folded and stitched. Super fancy, huh? So we have another piece and another two seams. Okay, put that in my pile of pieces. And now I'm gonna rip off. Ooh, there's another piece of interfacing here. So there's another piece in there. All right. I believe this is called a welted pocket. If it has two of these flappy things, it's a double welted pocket, but this is a single welted pocket. All right, so it's stitched right in here. First, what is right in here? It is stitched into the bottom piece first. So I'm gonna rip out that seam. Th 
they did super back stitching right here. So it's a pain in the butt. And they did tighter stitching. <laughs> the stitching on the pocket is a much tighter stitch than the side seams of this vest. Really shows you that they're like, what is the loosest stitch length we can get away with for this particular part of the process? Because I'm all for larger stitching lengths, personally. It goes way faster and it's easier to rip out. But you gotta know the rules. Yeah, it's super tight stitching right at the corners, but that's where it's really held together nicely. They did a very good job, whoever this was that put this together. All right, so we have a little square rectangle of fabric for the welted pocket, and it has a little piece of fusible um, lining, and you can actually see I don't know if you guys can actually see, but this one has all the glue dots that you can still kind of see on it. So two more pieces, one and two. And we got one pocket off. Let's rip this one apart. All right, I'm gonna do this one a lot faster because now I know how it was kind of put together. This smells really good, like um, like a flag fla fragrant. I cannot speak. Um, starch. I'm like, I know the smell. This smells like when we used to starch the uh, motifs. That's. <laughs> they probably definitely use starch in this process to make these crisp corners, and I can smell it. Interesting, like this is just a suit. It didn't have like one smell or the other. If anything, it smelled like spooky laying on this suit. But right at this pocket, I am smelling the spray starch and it's really sweet. I like ironing with starch because it starts to smell caramely because you start to burn those sugars. It is a comfort smell for sure. Okay. Doubt that. I ripped out the whole pocket as like one piece this time. See, there's the welted pocket. Still functional. Nope. Yes, still functional. You can still kind of hold things, but let's rip it off. I lost track of how many seams that was. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, don't do that. Okay. So this is two more pieces for the rectangle and the fusible interfacing. So let's count those two pieces. And seams, we did one, two. And two more seams for this pocket, one and two. And we have another piece and a rectangle. So one more piece and two more seams. And now we have this vest piece with no pockets on it anymore, just little slits. And this fake dart, I'm not gonna bother ripping it out because it's not gonna do anything. It's just a little tuck. And I believe they sewed it before they cut the seam because they're lined up perfectly. And it would be a pain in the butt to try and do that as twice 
yeah. Super easy to just sew it like this and then add the pocket. Okay. And yeah, you can see this armhole has been trimmed down. So one, two more pieces because the fusible lining and the actual fabric. So two more pieces. One, two, and I'm going to count the seam even though I am not actually ripping it out. So counted. Let's throw that over there. Look at, we're in shreds now. Look at all these shreds I have of this. And now we're to one more piece. Isn't this exciting? I find it exciting. You guys must, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So thank you for joining me on this. Dan does junks here. Hello, Dan, how you doing? So did you wear a vest today? That's the real question. I know you're in construction, so you may have easily worn a vest because we're trying to think the last time you've worn a vest. I can't think the last time I wore a vest. It's genuinely running a blank. So three buttons. I have this sweater that reminds me of the labyrinth, the girl from the labyrinth. And I wore that one a few weeks ago. That's the last time I wore a vest. <laughs> ha, I knew cause it's like not something I wear often, but it happens, you know? Okay. Oh, geez. Did you guys know that you can sew buttons on the sewing machine? There's a secret way to. Um, you set your zigzag to the width of the buttonholes of, as a far apart as they are, and then you turn off your feed dogs. You can lower your feed dogs, and then it won't push your fabric forward, and you just line it up, and you go back and forth and back and forth until it's stuck on there, and then you do it on the other button. And that's how they attach these buttons to this um, vest. Not bad. It's not the best way to attach buttons because you're just going back and forth and back and forth, which technically locks your stitches, but it can come undone over time. The technical, the right way you're supposed to do is by hand, and then you create a thread, sh a thread shank, I can speak, by wrapping the thread around the shank of the button about three times and then pulling it tight and you pop it off and that's how you sh tighten your buttons. But that requires you doing it by hand when you can line it up on a sewing machine and just bang them all out. It's significantly easier that way. So three buttons popped out. Let's turn this guy inside out. <laughs> Dan does junk. Yes, I wear one every day, every work day. Yep. They are very, okay. Okay, so this one, they really, you can see the very obvious cut. They, they're like, oh. So they trim back the seam allowance so that this is easier to turn. But they also, you can see right at these corners, they cut off the corners. Just took the pair of scissors and cut the corners. Like even down here and not here, but they cut this corner, this corner, this corner. Look at them cutting corners. No, you have to cut corners. Otherwise they don't lay flat. And it looks like, again, this is one seam and this is a second seam. This seam goes all the way down and around, maneuvering the corners with a back stitch at the top and bottom. So let's rip out the big seam again. When I'm ripping out the seams, I rip out just below the back stitching, and then I kind of pick out this giant knot of a mess, which is the back stitch seams because those lock it in. And then I just start ripping. So, 
look at how nice that little corner flips because they trimmed it down and then pressed it. Yeah, I love looking at the ugly sides of sewing projects because they really are this ugly, but it's the ironing and the finished edges that just make everything look so much nicer. Okay, I am going to do the armhole now and then we'll move on to the other pieces because, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go right below this back stitching, rip out the back stitching. Ta-da! All right, let's do this piece. How many seams did I just, did I just rip out? One, two, let me count them. I'm go, this is so unscientific. One, two. It's okay, we're just dissecting it. <sighs> okay, we'll do this back piece and then we'll do this piece. So we're going to do, separate the facing from the lining. You, have a, you can have a garment that just has facing and you can have a garment that just has lining and you can have a garment that has both a facing and a lining. This one is a fancy one. It has a facing and a lining. And I think it looks very nice and clean. So here's our facing piece. And it is two pieces because it has the fusible um, interfacing. And so interfacing and the facing. This is definitely interfacing and not interlining because it's on the facing. It's an interfacing. But, um, you know, sometimes things just click and you go, oh, that's the correct term. It just clicked for me. So we're learning. Two more pieces counted. And this is one piece, this is the lining. Look how skinny and tiny this little piece is. Sometimes I'm really amazed at these weird little slivers that end up being pieces. And also, this is where you can get really, like when you're cutting your stuff out and you're like, is this a scrap or is this a piece? <laughs> you have to kind of mark things. It's interesting is that this piece that they trimmed off to fit in the armhole, they had to trim in order for this piece to fit in. Because look at that. Hmm. Okay, counted that. Now let's about this um, pocket. And I'm kind of an expert at ripping out these pockets now. <sighs> this is a single welted pocket. Knowing what something's called helps you to find it, like especially like Googling terms. If you want to learn how to sew a welted pocket, you can Google single welted pocket, double welted pocket, and it will tell you exactly how to do this. If just how to sew a vest pocket, you're going to get a million different things. You might end up with these style pockets where they're just a top stitched pocket. Probably not a cow. These are riveted on, but to get this style, it's called a single welted pocket. So if you want to learn how to do it, you can look it up now. You're welcome. Dan does junk. Corners are fun, especially while driving. Corners can be very, very tricky, but when they're done well, honestly, when you do your job really well, people don't notice. It's when you don't do it well that they're like, looks very well homemade, doesn't it? Austin Lips. Hi, Felicia. How's your day going? And what are you making? Hi, Austin Lips. My day is going well. I'm here. I made it. And I am not making anything today. I'm being destructive. And I'm shredding the suit vest up today. We are ripping apart this vest. 
All right, got my top stitching and this top stitching is very tightly done and it is back stitched. Yeah, where the pocket is attached to the vest, they're very tight stitches. Inside the pocket, the pocket, these stitches are the biggest stitches in the vest. They're just, just tacked together. Yeah, the sound effects make it more um, descriptive. <laughs> the ch -ch -ch. Yeah, they're just ch -ch -ch. Okay, let me rip this. Oh, these tight stitches, they're really well secure, but they don't rip as easily. All right, so I just ripped out two, sti two seams. Let me mark those seams before I forget them. I just ripped out two seams. It's the two on the bottom. All right. And about three seams. And this last little seam holding this pocket lining. Rip that off. Okay. Now, no more pocket, and we have one, two pieces, two seams on this pocket. One, two, and one piece. Count the piece. And then we have this is that same stop. We have two more pieces because we have that little piece of interfacing or interlining. I think this would be considered an inter, no? Because facings add structure and support to a garment where a lining just finishes the edges and interlining would be something that supports the lining. So this would be an interfacing. I don't know, I'm only live on the internet so you can always double check, fact check me. But two more pieces right here. And... We have this seam that I'm not going to bother ripping out, which is our mock dart. It's a very good style line. It really does. So we're going to count that mark, mock dart. And then this is two pieces. So it's the interlining or is it an interlining or interfacing? Honestly, I've used the term so interchangeable that I don't know technically 100% the difference of the interlining and interfacing, but it's the stuff that goes on the inside that you don't see that gives more support and structure to the exterior fashion fabrics and lining fabrics and facing fabrics. So count those two pieces, one, two. All right, this whole thing is ripped up into shreds. How many pieces do you think there are? Quick guess, let me count. We have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 seams. Actually, I think it's 30 because I only counted one of the um, seams on the thing. So it's 30. So we have about 30 seams and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 pieces. 25 pieces, okay. I think we had about 20 pieces on the shirt, 25 pieces for uh, um, vest. It's fully lined and it has in, it has facings. Um, yeah, not bad, makes sense. Let's see. Dan does junk. It's a lining that's inside, so interlining makes sense. Yeah, no, there's interlinings, there's interfacings, there are facings, and there are linings. So linings you see, interlinings you don't, facings you go on the inside of the 
fabric and interfacings go inside of the interfacing. So interfacing, interlining, they often kind of get muddled together because they're both on the inside of whether they're supporting the facing or the fabric or the lining. And um, you can use a facing or a lining to finish an edge, or you can use both. This vest used both. So I think they used interlinings and interfacings and linings. Mm -hmm. So my question for you guys, is there anything that surprised you about this vest? Me, I was honestly surprised on how they hid the, the last, the last seam, how they flipped it all inside out. I wasn't expecting it to be sewn at the side seams because often they can, you don't have to sew the side seam shut to flip it. They sometimes hide it in the shoulder seam so that it can all be sewn on the perimeter, flipped inside out through the arm, the tops of the um, shoulder seams. And then they sew the shoulder seams together so that it's all fully lined and interlined, but there's not a, like a seam where you can, they had a seam where you couldn't go through from the um, lining. They didn't connect. They were just sewn there. So I think it's interesting that they did it that way. And I think that I probably will do a vest that way next time in the future as opposed to trying to hand stitch it and hide the stitching in the shoulder. But it also depends on the materials you work with. Because the last time I made a vest, it was a group. Gray. It was a black fur. It wasn't a gorilla chest, but it was a black fur vest with a hot pink lining. And I didn't do an inter interfacing. I just fully lined it instead of doing interfacing. Yeah. And I think it would be easier to hide the flipping in the shoulder seam versus the hemline. But fur is tricky in its own. It has its own set of issues. <laughs> but um but yeah, Dan does junk too many terms might to make my brain hurt. Yeah, the thingamajig next to the thing. <sighs> have you ever tried to read a sewing pattern and you kind of have to read it a few times going, wait, what are they actually telling me to do? Because sewing patterns are written by people who know how to write, not necessarily who know how to sew. And once, and my teacher pointed that out to me like years and years ago, and it just made a whole bunch of sense. And so it's like, okay, you understand the general gist and the terminology, you can figure out a good sewing pattern. Not top. These have been great. Super cool to see the details inside of a suit. Thank you. Yana, was sorry I left again. I was taking pictures of my mom. And hi, Dan and Austin. Well, Iana, let's welcome back. We are just finished up. I ripped apart this vest. It is all shredded in pieces. I really like how they did the um, armholes because armholes are kind of tricky. Like it's a curve that flips and they did a really nice job. They pressed it. They trimmed out the excess. And then on the, um, the lining, instead of doing it super thin. They did the um, the slashes, the slash and spread method. So on a concave curve versus a convex curve, uh, you either do slices or wedge pie shapes out of it. And honestly, sometimes I just do all pie shapes and sometimes I just do the slashes. But, but yeah, it makes a huge difference in the way your garment turns. Um, Austin List, if it's made good, is it going to be hard to rip apart? Yes. No. Both. In a garment, you want the thread to fail before you the fabric fails because it's easier to rip, to fix a ripped seam than it is to fix shredded fabric. Um, Tighter stitching versus looser stitching. Tighter stitching is going to be hard to, harder to rip out. Looser stitching is easier to rip out. Now, if you lock the stitching at the ends, so when you start and where you end, 
it makes when you lock the stitches, it's going to be harder to rip out. So when they didn't lock their stitches, it was super easy to rip out. When they lock the stitches, you have to unlock the stitches, rip that part out slowly, and then you can rip out the rest easily. Um, but then you have to add into the factor of the fabric. So like this fabric right here is super shreddy. See how those are giant holes in the... Um, seams where I ripped out the seams here. This cheap shreddy fabric makes it very difficult to rip out seams because you don't want to shred the fabric. This lovely fabric is can be tricky to rip out because it's a very shreddy but delicate fabric. This right here is a very sturdy twill weave. What's a twill weave? It's a, um, denim's a twill weave. It is a tight interlocked wo woven pattern with a sturdier fabric and doesn't shred as easily. It's still a woven, so it does have this, it can unravel, but it pops out a lot easier. So I think it has more to do with, um, the fabrics, but yes, a well-constructed garment is a little bit more difficult to rip apart, especially doing all your back stitches and finishing the edges correctly. But a seam isn't there that difficult to rip out. And if it's too tight, then you have issues that are, a, you have different issues that are a pain in the butt. So, so yeah. Um, Iana lives at behind the scenes fashion. So are you going to make patterns for us to use? Um, I don't think you want me making patterns based off of this suit because it is so teeny tiny. This is a little kid's suit. Granted, this will fit my armhole, but it's not going to close in the front. It, you know, like it's kind of pointless to make a um, pattern based off of the suit, but I know how to pattern all these pieces. Maybe for a future video. I'm not I'm not gonna commit myself to anything now, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. But I'm not gonna make a, a pattern based on this. I could scale it up so that it fits me though. That might be a possibility. We'll see. We'll see. Let's just get the ripping it apart first. Let's get some shreds going on. Okay. Oh, do you hear Toby and Bruno in the background? I am ignoring them, so I didn't even pay attention. But, okay. I have ripped this apart. Next week, we are going to do the pants before we do the jacket. And I find pants fascinating because they are a relatively new invention in um, fashion history. Robes, dresses, those go back you know, loincloths, basic human clothing is easy to do, you know, tubes. But once we start factoring in pants, that starts getting really complicated really fast. People didn't really start wearing pants till post-Roman Empire, and then they were a pair of pants because they weren't necessarily sewn together at the crotch seam. Um, they were two separate pieces before they ever got sewn together. Um, but yeah, cod pieces would fill the void and other such things. So I find pants history very fascinating and I find pants very fascinating and we will be ripping those apart next week. Now, interesting thing is since we're doing a teeny tiny suit, this suit was done with a um, elastic waistband. So it's not like a fancy formal waistband, but I probably will have other examples to show you like what they're trying to do. So that's for next week. Danda's junk. After you do the entire suit, what's next? I don't know, but we'll find out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Yana Lith, maybe it's better than no. <laughs> um, so anyways, next week's 
pants. We'll do a pair of pants. Just one pair of pants, not two pairs of pants. What do you call a pair of pair of pants? Anyways. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate all of you guys here and I'll see you guys next week on Tuesday. All right. Bye.